And Jesus is speaking here, and he's dealt with some subjects that I very easily could have got caught up in. But I want to focus on this one thought for today and, and, and get you back um, to the fundamentals of, of living for God. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Notice, notice there's involvement there. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now, I, I could take those three things and break down a sermon right now, but I'm not going to because I have a very simple point that I want to get across to you, and maybe we'll come back and visit this on another Wednesday night. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, we said all that, but listen to what he wants to get you to focus on. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? He is bringing into it the child-parental relationship. He's talking about relationship here. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, and just kind of hide your feelings because you might get offended here, being evil, no question there. We're flesh, guys. Know how to give good gifts unto your... See, he's dealing with the parental-child relationship. Sadly, we get a few years on us. And all of a sudden, you think, well, I've kind of graduated from that. No, you moved out of the house and you're lost. What, you don't need daddy no more? Come on, we've all heard that young teenage boy. I'm my own man now. Yeah, you ain't bought a stitch of them clothes in your back. Boy, get back in your room and clean it while you're in there. And I said that with... with a, a quick point, because sometimes we forget. You didn't get here without God. You ain't taking nothing with you. Wake yourself up. Lay hands on yourself. Slap yourself silly. Drag yourself to an altar. Whatever it takes. But let's put God back as our Father. If ye then being able to know how to give gifts, give good gifts unto your children, how much more? See what, he see, see what he's saying here? Oh, yeah, I know you think you're such a great parent, grandparent, mom, dad. Get over yourself. You can't touch what God can do. Stop trying to compete with your neighbors and get connected to God. The American ideology is going to lead more people completely blessed with the abundance of things in life straight to hell because they neglect making God the whole heavenly father and they think they're all that in a bag of chips. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, I'm going to tell you what that therefore is there for. All things whatsoever ye would that man should do to you. You wanted that job, and you want the man to give you the job. You wanted that loan, you wanted whatever it is in the world. Do even so to treat people, be a giver. Be amazing to people. For this is the law and the prophets. He pulled in the Old Testament right there. A lot of people don't want to talk about the Old Testament today. But he hasn't, he's not wiped away the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 fits right in with the New Testament. Well, I'm not going down that street tonight either. Let's go ahead and place our Bibles down and let's, let's seek the face of God, our Heavenly Father, right now. Jesus, I need you. I need your help. 
Help me to bring forth this word, God, with clarity, Lord God, conviction, God, and help us draw closer to you, Lord. Help us to truly walk with you and talk with you, Lord, and help us become as dear children in your presence, God, that we would walk in your will and in your ways. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. The context is that we indeed need to entreat God as our Heavenly Father, which means we must remain humbly children in need of God. That's hard to do today. It's especially hard to do in the United States. Ain't none of us sitting under a bridge in Del Rio wanting a place to stay. Hello? Walking by faith and having trust in God doesn't mean just showing up on Sundays and Wednesdays in our nice polished cars, leaving behind our manicured lawns and nice bank accounts. That's not walking in faith. And sadly, our American opulence extinguishes our need for real active faith. But I'm going to tell you something right here right now. It's coming. We have houses and physicians and drugstores and jobs and think we have need of nothing. And we come in with a, with a patronizing effect into the house of God. And we'll worship if we like the song. We'll shout amen if we like what's being preached. And we, 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 everything is so diluted. Because what happens is we become more like spiritually defunct teenagers and we get a little time under our belt and start thinking we don't need the father, the father's house, the rules, the standards that it upholds. See, many of us will, will refer to dad in contexts of things we've lived up to. But how often will we refer to dad in things we know we've lost sight of? I'm not honest about that. But Paul admonished his son in the gospel, and I need you to listen, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 18 and 19. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. You can put on a good face here, but some of us need to allow our conscience to speak to us. Say, you know, your ideology and your idea of thinking about the church, you kind of messed up. You don't come here needing dad. You come in here thinking you're blessing dad. You think you're God's gift to dad. He said, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away. Yeah, that's for the new converts and concerning faith have made shipwreck. How is it that an inexhaustive God that pours out anointings and gives words and, and amazing miracles becomes stagnant in our lives? How does that happen? How is it that some of us, and we refer to the good old days like God died or something, or refer to a time when, man, I used to be on fire, but I'm a little older and more mature now. Oh, God, that I get some immaturity today and become a child in the house of my father. <laughs> That's why many lack or are existing in life without a real faith in God. If you will hand down a true walk with God, a humble walk with God as being a child. You don't have to worry about the direction for your children because they're in the same hands of the Hello. that Hello. you're. Hello. You worry because you're trying to pass more on of you than of him. Luke chapter 18 and 70, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. In all honesty, we need to recapture that unquestionable faith and reliance on God like our children have in us. You hear what I'm saying? We don't bring the word of God to life. 
It brings life to us. Quit trying to doctor up and to try to convince your children and family members. Quit, quit trying to be spectacular even behind the pulpit and, and, that, and, and that animated to such a way that you're trying to get the, the scriptures are spirit and they are life. It brings life to us, not the other way around. And not only does this, this word cut through to examine our life, which it may tonight, but it has the power to bring healing to that which it exposes. You can be healed tonight from your struggle with being a child of God. It's hard to become a, a little child sometimes. Because you so, I want to grow up. But the problem is I need to grow up in the house of God and not be the prodigal leaving for other parts of the world. So that brings me to our text. Because what I want to talk about tonight is really asking for a blessing from your father. When you've been acting up, it's kind of hard to go to dad. I'm kind of in that situation right now with uh, the situation in my life. It's hard to ask God for something extra when you're kind of taking for granted what's already been given. But if you find with me and follow with me and go to Joshua chapter 15, we're going to read two verses there and then Hopefully, speedily, I'll get through this, and I am watching the clock. Verse 18, and it came to pass, as she came unto him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lied it off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, what wouldest thou? Who answered, give me a blessing, for thy house given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. Tucked away. Little place of scripture. We are introduced to a character that seldom receives much spotlight. I don't know, perhaps it's because of the slow progress of the land allotments discussed in Joshua 15, or maybe because it's overshadowed by the gory events that occur in Judges one without an Ibizek. However, if you take a closer look at the two verses in Joshua, they, Joshua, they reveal to us a woman that I believe each one of us should endeavor to emulate. If you think about the challenge that Caleb put out there, it's not the first one. There's a similar challenge cast out by King Saul when faced with Goliath in 1 Samuel 17:25. But nevertheless, here in Joshua 15 and 16, Caleb throws out this challenge to the tribal warriors, the men among men of Israel, that he that smiteth here Jasaphir and taketh it, to him will I give Aksha, my daughter to wife. And that's kind of, it's got the, the earmarks of a, age-old tale or exciting where men really stood forth as real men. This challenge, you understand, immediately follows Caleb's assertion because he ran off the children of Anak. He dealt with giants and descendants of giants. Caleb's Caleb's an intimidating figure. He made it through generation after generation. He walked with an air of, hey, you can't fault the guy. He stood the test of time and remained a son to his heavenly father and set an example. And here he is now bellowing out a challenge to find out where the real man at. <laughs> it's immediately seized upon by an individual by the name of Nathaniel. Caleb wasn't just only a great man of bold deeds driving out those descendants of Anak, but he was also an encourager of others to also take bold conquests and do great deeds. 
And he did this by offering his daughter in marriage. You have to understand, this wasn't a relinquishing of parentinghood or, or being a parent or being an amazing dad. He was looking for an amazing husband. Not just some run-of-the-mill joker that could maybe have the gift of gab, but someone that would really step up as he did when the time needed. He's a guy that understood, wait a minute, because you have to stop and, and think about this for a minute. A girl raised in a very prominent guy's house like Caleb, you know, she may not just be just a delicate wallflower. She, she could be as fine as frog hair, but being raised in that kind of house, the dude that's going to be able to uh, be a spouse to her better have more than a, a backbone. He better have some forearms. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Caleb wanted the bravest, most responsible man in Judah to marry his daughter. Not some wimp, not, not some guy that just has the image of being spiritual, just the image of being godly, just following along and looking like something. Caleb wanted someone that would really step up and be a leader. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A lot of people just kind of go with the flow with an errant word here or there or there, but they're really not, a, not, 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 not made out of fiber to take risk. As soon as they're risk, oh, leave me out of it. Because they're more worried about their image. Caleb wanted to break through that. Well, give me a man that's willing to stand up when they're standing alone. Hello, guys. Are you with me? And he knew only the best would also think his daughter was worth it. Don't you want someone to have value? I think of the church as a bride. God's looking for men that'll stand up and say, wait a minute, you're going to value my church like I do. It's not just something to exercise your sometimes on again, off again ministry, but it's something that you're all in day and day out. It's not a pastime, it's your full time. It's not something that you mingle in. He's turning around. I'm going to give my dog. I'm looking for someone that's going to cherish and stand and not talk about taking a bullet, but willing to take a bullet for my daughter. When you look at verse 17. It says, so Nathaniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him his daughter to wife. In ancient times, we know that names were given to a person and the name that was given spoke to a person's character. The name Nathaniel means Lion of God. Some of Caleb's daring faith apparently rubbed off on his son-in-law. We could say more about him right now. And he actually became the first judge, if you know your Bible. It's pretty, pretty intimidating who this guy became. It's pretty awesome. He wasn't just a fly-by night. And the fact that Caleb put this out there lets us know he weeded out the wannabes to the is. So Nathaniel succeeds, and he's true to his word, and he's given access for a reward for overcoming, taking your justice here. But suddenly in these two verses that I read to you, we're kind of propelled into a narrative, a moment that comes and goes really quickly that we can kind of miss it, surrounded by all the, the bravado, the bravery, and the amazingness of taking the land and being conquering heroes, rushed right in the middle here. And I'm going to read you another version. I read you the King James. I, th I think this is the NIV that I have here. Now it was so when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. Listen to me, folks, because you know I'm going to bring something out with that. So she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, what do you wish? No, religiously, she said, hey, she followed the etiquette of her husband being the head of the house. But as the, as the bride, she turned around and jumped in, dismounted, said, and her dad saw her. He raised this girl. I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> said, dad looks and says, what do you, what do you want? <laughs> Come on, girls. You know how to get your, you know how to wrap daddy around your finger. <laughs> little tear here, there, a little something. Whatever, however you work your magic, y'all work that magic on your dad. Right? 
She answered, give me a blessing. She's not denying she's already been given. She says, since you have given me a land in the south, hey, give me also springs of water. So he gave her upper springs and lower springs. So he not only gave her what he asked, he gave her even more. Some of us need to get back to the old age of letting him be dad, letting him be father, and us be the children, and learn how to talk to daddy, say, wait a minute. It's been a long time since I've done this. But it's like that little kid in that old English story as all those little orphans sat around the table eating their porridge. And that little young lad walks up with his little ball completely out of order and says, Sir, can I have some more? Oh, that we get that walk with our dad. Get that walk with our heavenly father. God, I got to have more. I got to have more. My family needs more. What I'm trying to do needs more. I know what you've done for me, but can I have more? (laughs) Jumbled together in these two verses are two requests. Y'all need to learn how to ask. Y'all need to get back to letting him be the heavenly father. Lay down that teenager syndrome that's causing you from walking around unspiritual, untouched, thinking the sky is brass and that God doesn't move or listen no more. He just like the rest of us. When you got an obstinate teenager that left the house, you're waiting for him to come back. Some of you need to realize he's waiting for you to come back. He's waiting for you to get that mindset. Don't think he doesn't want to give. Don't think he doesn't don't have. Don't think that he doesn't have any store. He's just waiting for you to get in a spiritual condition to handle what he wants to give you. So first, ask ask, ask her new husband to ask Caleb for a field. (laughs) In reality, the word moved is more accurately translated as, hold on, fellas, enticed or allured. Hey, honey, you know she said, wait for him to come home, maybe coming home from beating on somebody. Who knows? He's a bad dude. Maybe he's pillow. I don't know. She waited for him to come home. You know that best meal was laid out. She had on the best outfit she had, whatever sweet smelling she had that on, to wait for him to come home. Hey, honey, because we need to learn how to ask. See, the way you live, Monday, too, you, you, you can't come in swelling sweet to God when you spend all your life in the picture. I, I get it. It may not be sin, but it is. this world is so corrupt, and this world has got some fearfully and wonderfully made individuals. Human beings are amazing, and we spend our life and time and thoughts about the carnal, worldly things, and you think it's coming, hey, Dad, give me. He's like, you stink of the world. Don't make sense to push back the plate. I'm hungry. Don't make sense to pray. Don't make sense. And some of you missed what it's like to come in to the presence of heavenly of your heavenly father and you've neglected prayer and you've ne- neglected reading. In fact, you've kind of become one of those disgruntled kids. I don't know if God this and God that, and I really don't know. And you're listening to music lyrics and you're listening to radio and you got and you're more concerned about politics and, and you try and you come in and you just stink like the world and you want God to turn around and be endeared to you. We need a revelation and a revival of learning how to ask God for an extra blessing. Man, I know God's moving on me. I'm telling you, y'all need to hear this. And sadly, one of the greatest stenches in the stench of God's nostrils is people that have a bunch of things and you think you have. And you don't realize you're poor and naked before God. Or you hear what I'm saying? In reality, that word moved, it means enticed or lured. And so she demonstrated, she showed, she expresses to us and she reveals to us how to approach our heavenly father. There's a reason we push things away. There's a reason we don't have to, things to do. There's a reason we take those time. We, we want to become alluring. We want to say, God, you are important to me. And, and what I'm doing, I want to be pleasing you. And I want that intimate walk with Jesus. We can't treat the church and we can't treat God and come rushing in at the last unthoughtful minute and say, God, where you at? 
Some of us have gotten mad and upset at God, but you've not lived in an alluring, enticing way for God to be endeared to you. You've treated him roughly. You spoke to him like a teenager does a dad, and you thought, well, I don't know about God. I don't know if I believe this anymore. Can you imagine the hurt you would feel if your own children turned around and said, you know, your mind would quickly go back to all the sacrifices, all the things you denied, all the, the dark. You don't think God sees that in us? You know, how often is a woman named in Scripture? It's really not often in, in, in scope compared to men. No, there's, there's some there, but, but really, hello? And so when we do see a name, and we see a name in the context that we find this this evening, and we see something at this level, we need to pay close attention. In fact, in Joshua's account of all the great warriors and the battles and things, in all 24 chapters, women only come up three times. Rahab, this young lady, Acacia, and, Acacia, and the daughters of Zelopehad. Jesus. What, what field is she asking for? What, what is it? Well, we're not definitively sure, but we can safely assume that the beer may not have much in the way of agriculture. You ever felt like my ground's just not producing? It would seem, without us finding reference, that this field was given to them via the Southland mentioned in verse 19. However, <laughs> this young lady's really just getting started. She has a city, she's got a field, but now she wants to ensure that both prosper and have access to water. And therefore, she's inspired this entire visit. She's inspired this entire first appealing in the proper way to her husband and then turning around and appealing to her father. She's coming to visit her father, and she leaps off the donkey in mid stride upon seeing him. And I'm sure this dad, this Caleb, recognizes the body language of his daughter. Look, I can tell when Erica's upset, and I can tell when she's cool. I can tell when she's ready to corner me and lay something down, and I can kill when she's, everything's wonderful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm sure Caleb did too. And Caleb, seeing the intensity of his daughter's approach, he says, oh, okay, I've seen that look before. I don't know. Did he use vernacular like this? I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I, in my mind, I'm thinking he, he's a battle-hardened warrior that stuck with it 40 years without getting to lay his hand on a real enemy. But then he turned around and defeated the descendants of Anak, and he's said, he, oh, man, no, fight. I can see the fight. I can see, I can see me and her. I wonder how many times God looks at us, why don't I see me in them? Is this too much tonight? Sister Crow, is this too much tonight? There's an importance in our intensity, our intensity, our intensity for the things of God proves our commitment. It, it proves it proves that we're convinced. When you come meandering in here and find yourself a seat and sit back and you're like, okay, let's see what moves me. You missed it. She showed up to move her father. She showed up in a way, hey, I've got to. Oh, I know I ain't getting all of you, but if I can get one or two of you, if I get three or four, if I can get someone in here today to realize there's a way to approach God, something's going to happen in your life, something will happen in this church, something will happen, maybe a family will be saved, family will make it through these end times. 
kind of rise that lady with the issue of blood pressing through the crowd. She says, the virtue, some of you need to come in here to get that virtue to flow. You can oh, it's just another Wednesday night. You got the, you want to get home to your little chores. You want to get home. You got this, yeah. Kids at home, yeah, got this, yeah. This little hobby and that. And you wonder why the God, the creator of the universe. I'm waiting for you to show up and become alluring to me. But this young lady, she doesn't waste any time. Well, I don't know. Lights off that camera. I doubt she does the whole tuck and roll thing because she's a lady, but she just up coming. Oh, the, my warrior princess has showed up. Husband's with her. Oh, Lord. I don't think it was like that. I don't think it was like that at all. Oh, yeah. That's my girl. I raised her to be a warrior. I raised her to be the most warrior ladylike princess that's not afraid to enter in and come to my house with a need because she knows I'm a heavenly father that likes to answer the needs. You have to, God wants to answer that need. God wants to, but some of you come in and treat them like you're going to the bank for a mortgage. Do you hit all the qualifications? I'm sorry, folks. I've already done taking 20 minutes longer than I expected. She's going to her father that for more than 40 years had a phrase locked in his hand. Give me my Oh, God, that the saddest things that we pass on to our children is phrases. The, the colloquialisms and the vernacular little sayings that we penetrate their poor little innocent skulls and hearts, all the, all the junk and the, 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 the sayings that we like because they kind of tickle our little ego, but they don't have those godly sayings of give me. We ought, to, we ought to check our speaking and check what we're listening to and check our culture and our, our little subculture that we create around our home. I want my babies to be talking about, give me my mountain, God. Give me the Holy Ghost. Uh, give me the answer to my prayer. I'm seeking. Oh, you ought to stop and be a, have a good reevaluation of yourself. What am I really passing on? What am I really handing my baby girls? What am I really handing my boys? What am I really handing my babies? He says, what wouldest thou? And we're going to pause. She didn't need to. You know, I appreciate that feel, Pop. <laughs> but I want to bless you. I'm not unthankful. But I need a blessing. Give me a blessing. Now see, if if this is where the English translation kinds of misses the emphasis being made by Petra. Because she's requesting a blessing which literally denotes a special favor. Some of you live the minimums with God. But if you would shift your mental paradigm, make God first and 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 and, 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 and endear special favor. It is so sad that we relinquish the blessings of God to things that perish when the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, how are you gonna hand down eternal life to your children if you make the temporal things so important? Maybe that's the mountain you need to turn and ask for. For thou hast given me a south land. Now there's more to this, and I hope to break it down. That word translated south in our English translations is actually negev. It means parched. Parched is when you need to hoe. I don't, you know, I'm you know, I got stuff to do, but I'm parched, and I need a drink. I need a blessing. Are you hearing me? 
this is an important lesson on being specific when you ask something of your father. Was not Jesus specific when he laid it out about coming as a child? If you then being evil, give this. If you then, how much? Oh, I think sometimes we come in here, we miss the fact. He's got it all. And it's not about whether he has it to give you or not. It's your demeanor. It's your approach. It's your allurement. It's the enticing of you walk in, God. I... She's basically telling her father, Dad, I appreciate the field you gave us, but the field's barren. Now, you think I've, I've missed it here, but I want you to follow me. So even though she's followed the etiquette of getting her new husband to go to Caleb, it is still a backside who actually goes on to ask Caleb for a blessing. And I'm sure, like I said, he knows his daughter. I believe that inside he's smiling because he knows that look and he gives it immediately. Now, this may be an assertive woman who knows the principalities of the practicalities of living on the land. Who knows that if, in reality, they are to live on the land or the field, that they were given. The land has to be productive. Your land, your home, your life has to be productive. I hope you've not relinquished a closer walk with God and settled for a parched land. Let me get where I'm going here. Maybe like our Heavenly Father, Caleb was testing this man and this daughter to see if they had enough faith to go to their father and ask for what he knew they already needed. If this man could wait 40 years to get that mount, he was probably saying, I'm going to see if they're going to realize that field ain't enough. It's parched. Are they going to realize they got to come to me and I, I, I got it to give, but they got to come to me in a certain way. And not only will I give them, oh, I'm, I'm blowing up. There are some of you all, oh, this, this church has sat on parched land too long, and I'm hoping we get some saints tonight that say, you know what? Jesus, fill it. Jesus, we need some water poured out here. We need the Holy Ghost poured. We want and need a blessing. I know you don't need nothing from the world, but you're in need of God and you're in need of your heavenly father to pour out in your home, to pour out in your life, to pour out in your ministry, to get you praying through to the Holy Ghost like never before in a dry and thirsty land. We need the Holy Ghost poured out. Are you willing to come in and say, God, I've been dry all week. I've been dry all month. I've been dry for years, but I need a blessing. And I need to hurry. I need to hurry. Keep on praying if you want to. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Someone might just get that water. Someone might just get that downpour. I know some of you don't want to be bothered tonight. And I know it's just Wednesday night and you don't want to sweat a little or mess your hair up or get a little sick. But there might be someone here ready to jump off that view you walked in on and say, God, I got to have a blessing. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. God may have given you just enough to find out if you'll get satisfied in your stale self. Or say, there ain't enough here for me to be really prosperous. There ain't enough. It's a little too dry for me to grow and bloom and blossom and bear fruit. You got to ask yourself, be transparent and honest enough. When's the last time you bore fruit in the kingdom of God? If your only claim to fame is your pocketbook, you've missed it. If your only claim to success is what the world says, you lost it. Oh, heaven ought to step back. There's a great cloud of witnesses looking around for those actions that will say, bless me, God. 
I need water on this barren land. My family needs it. My children need it. My husband needs it. My wife needs it. We ain't going to make it without your blessing. We ain't going to make it without you being our Heavenly Father. Let me, let me come in that another direction briefly. Sadly, as a pastor, sometimes I do know too much. Some of you struggle. You don't even know where your place is. And you're afraid to be transparent before God because of what you think people are going to think. I hate to break it to you, but when she and her husband pulled up to the house, you better understand who Caleb was. He didn't care what anybody thought. I got a daddy. I don't care what you all think. That's my daddy. That's my heavenly father. I don't care what you think when we show up asking daddy. See, 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 see. Some of you are so arrogant. You like it when you're dad. You like it when you're in charge. You like it when you've got to give. And sadly, that's no replacement from you being able to go to God when he's got to give. Are you hearing me? Some of us need to teach our children, look, I'm not the real giver. He is. I'm not the one that really gave, uh, uh, what I'm doing, I learned from him. And you need to realize you got to go to him. Mm. So maybe God gave you a field and he did it on purpose because it's barren. And maybe your home and your family and you yourself are spiritually barren and dry and you've been so honestly for a long time. You're in a dry place. Well, the honest question isn't obviously what you think it is, but it's what I'm about to tell you. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Hey, man, don't, don't be coming to the pastor complaining about your wife or your hubby. Don't come to the pastor complaining. No, 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 no. Why don't, why don't you go to God and start telling, hey, my wife ain't spoken tongues in 10 years. You want to be running to your father. I need a blessing. Oh, what are you going to do about it? Sit there until you die? Wither away, dry up? Oh, God, I hope there's some people in here that will take the approach of action. Oh, I hope there's some people today that get this short little message, this little, this little thought and realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to come to my heavenly father. Oh, I know he's given me, but I'll tell you what, he was testing me to see if I was going to ask for what I really needed to make what he gave me blossom to become fruitful. I hope we decide to take your example tonight. When she responded to her father's questions of what do you want? You ever notice kids don't mince words? You, 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 you poor as Job's turkey. A little kid will say, I want a new bite. Hello? They're graduating from high school. Can I have a car? And sadly, you know, it, 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 we got so much America on us that we think if we can provide those things, we've made it. But it's not that we can. What does God want to give? Do you realize what happened? Do you realize Caleb's response? I believe he sat there and he knew. He gave them that teaser wedding gift or whatever it was. 
I wonder how long he was up at the house just maybe talking to his wife. Yeah. I give him a day or two unless he's more stubborn. But I don't know. She uh, she don't tolerate much. She's kind of like me. Come on, guys. And nobody else have that interior monologue going on about your life and about what's going on. It's uh, the, <laughs> oh no, that they're saying. Oh no, no, yeah. Hold on a minute. They're, don't you? Yeah. She said, what do you want? Give me springs of water. You realize what he did? He didn't ask any questions. This is another thing where we struggle. I'll give, but give me some detail. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> what do you want that for? See, I live in a house where Especially this past weekend, I got one lovely lady comes and says, hey, I need your, your, your credit card. I'm like, oh, okay. And it wasn't a few hours later, hey, I need your card. I'm like, man, I'm running out of these things, guys. What, what? <laughs> but do you realize what Caleb did? No questions. No indignation. In fact, I don't even think he flinched. I don't think there was any type of apprehension to, to give his daughter this double blessing. I, not only does he give her the upper springs, but he, he annies it up one and gives her the lower springs. Oh, some of you, some of you, don't get distracted right now. Don't miss this. Aaron, sit down and quit going to the bathroom. Listen, anybody your age going to the bathroom three times in a service, maybe you need to go to a doctor or just become, be able to focus in church. Listen, I don't want no one distracted. I'm not getting on to you. Just listen. This is important for us to get. Not only, I, I gave you this, 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 I gave you this piece of Arizona right here with parched dry ground. And she comes in and says, I need a blessing. And he not only gives her the, Upper springs. I'm going to give you the lower spring. What does flowing water do for a barren desert? She, he gave him a piece of land, and I believe he fully intended it's going to become springs in the desert. If you will get right with me, if you will entreat me as a heavenly father, if you will come to me realizing, hey, I'm barren, but I need more. I'm not only going to give water flow to you, but I'm going to give you so much, it'll flow through you. Caleb gave her access to a continual flow. Maybe that don't do to you what it does for me, but I'm thankful that I got a God that it don't just flow to me. It'll flow through me. He'll give me an abundance where it don't stick to me, but I can become a blessing and fruitful and giving. Let's all stand. A spring glowing with living water to bring life to everything around it. The, the, the possibility, the ability to turn parched ground into productive. Oh, I wonder if someone here desires to be a blessing. I wonder if there's someone here going, you know what, God? Oh, I come to ask for a blessing because I want to be a blessing. I don't want to just be a church goer. I want to be the church doer. I want to be involved in the kingdom because if he can give it to you, he can give it through you. Bottom line, bottom line is we all stay. How, how, how does this happen? How did this whole thing come about? One person was not content, content with just one conquered city. They pressed for a field. 
and then she was not content with just any old field. She wanted a prosperous field. And the only way to secure such a field was to make haste to her father's house and ask him for a blessing. She wanted a watered field, and he said, I'm not just going to give you a watered field. I'm going to give water that comes in, and your field will start giving water. I wonder, I wonder what would happen if you and I were to make our way right now, this very moment, into the bold place of prayer to make such a request of our Heavenly Father. Right now, we would say, I need a blessing.